Good morning. I'm Reverend Karen Gigax Rodriguez. I welcome you to this online worship service. It's a joy to be together. And if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you're able to chat with us during the service and do things like welcome one another, uh, share your gratitudes, share any prayer requests, share any thoughts as we go through the service today. So I invite you to do that. And even if you're already subscribed but haven't chatted with us, I invite you to try that out because we always love to know who's worshiping together. It gives us a sense of being in community together. And today especially, we're going to be looking at the thought of what it means to be home and how in Jesus we are home and how as we are salt and light for Jesus, we are shining a light, keeping the light on for those to come home. So I uh, invite you to think on these thoughts and to share with us. And then today is also a communion Sunday where we remember the Lord's Supper and we become home with one another as we share a meal together. So I invite you to uh, get together some elements in your home that you might use as we share the meal together later on in this service. But I extend a very warm word of welcome to you. It is so good to be in worship together. As we begin this morning, we always begin with gratitude. And I wonder what you might share with someone in your own house that you're grateful for this morning. I invite you to put that in the chat area. I wonder what, what things are normal things for you, but today they're taking on extra significance of gratitude. For example, in my list this week were heat and warm coats for the winter. Now, by the time we're here on Sunday, it's warmer than it was in the middle of the week, but there were some pretty cold days this past week, and I was so grateful for heat and warm coats. I was also very grateful to spend some time with Derek, and uh, this coming week we'll spend some time with Andrew, so that always brings joy to my heart. And I am really grateful for church attenders who are checking in with others to see how they're doing. If we're missing one another, we give one another a call. And I heard this past week of someone receiving a call because she hasn't been feeling very well. And so um, another church member called. And it's one thing for me to call, but it's, it's really wonderful when we call one another. So I'm grateful for that. And I wonder what you're grateful for this morning as we share in this time of gratitude together. And as we do that, we always like to share uh, this prayer of gratitude, and I invite us to do just that this morning. Lord, you are an abundant giver. There is nothing that I have that you have not given me. The way of your kingdom is the way of generosity. Help us to honor you with our resources. Free us from the deceit of riches. Lead us on a path of generosity for your glory, Lord, for the abundance of our own lives and for the sake of others. Amen. And this morning we also come with prayer requests and I have a list that I would like to share with you this morning and I also invite you to share any prayer requests that you might have in the chat area. But this morning we want to pray for uh, Jerry who is continuing to recover from a surgical procedure. We want to pray for Betty and those who are working with healthcare in the healthcare professionals that are seeking answers in Betty's health needs. We want to pray for Betsy and any uh, one that is dealing with vasculitis. We want to pray with Dave who's having a third ablation procedure and anyone who's dealing with the effects of heart failure. I have a personal prayer request this morning for our son Andrew and his collegiate swim team as they travel to Evansville, Indiana for the GLVC conference meet. This will be his last conference meet as a swimmer. So uh, it's bittersweet for us and we pray for him and his team. Wanna pray for healing from any kind of trauma that one might be experiencing in their life. And we want to pray for mental health uh, healing for people as well. And I wonder what you might add to this list as we pray together this morning. 
I have this morning a prayer that I'm going to begin with that includes some thoughts from our um, scripture readings that I'll be sharing in a moment, and then I'll continue with the prayer and the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray together. When we see the hungry and refuse to pass them by, when we humbly notice those walking shoeless in winter before we repair the holes in our souls, we will worship you truly, God of the feast and the fast. When we think the line workers are as valuable as the CEOs, when we give our in-law apartment to a homeless family, we will follow you faithfully, servant of the oppressed. When we mend fences with our siblings and build bridges to our enemies, when our cries for justice are louder than a vuvuzela, we will proclaim your hopes, spirit of justice. Then we will be like a royal botanical garden watered by that grace which never runs dry. God in community, holy in one. Lord, we hear these prayers of justice and service and love of community and hope, and they interflow between our personal lives and our community life. As you, has, as you have witnessed the prayer requests on our screen this morning, as well as in our chat area. And Lord, we ask that you would be with us hearing our prayers, focusing our hearts on you, strengthening us as community as we lift one another up and helping to hold up the arms of those who are weak and bolster the spirits of those who have been depressed. Lord, we pray for our community, for our sense of home, the body that we call home, the Christ as we know it in our community. But we also pray for other communities. We remember this month as being Black History Month. And we pray for the community of African-American families, communities, cities, cultures, places. We pray for a sense of home for all communities, of people of all cultures. We pray for justice, and we pray, Lord, that we might be mindful not only of the things closest to us, but Realize that even in places far away, we share a common desire for home in you. Lord, we ask that you would hear our prayers as we share together in this prayer that you prayed and you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So this morning, we're going to be looking at two scripture readings from the lectionary readings for this week. The first is from Isaiah chapter 58, verses 6 through 12. And then the second is from Matthew, from that greatest sermon I call that Jesus ever preached, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, verses, um, I have to look at it again, 13 to 20. And as we look at these, I ask that you pay attention to anything that stands out to you, that God might be highlighting for you, any scripture that asks you to pause and ponder for a little bit. Beginning with this a reading from Isaiah 58, verses 6 through 12. Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? 
Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and shall be like the watered garden whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. And then this reading from the Gospel of Matthew again, verses, uh, chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but it is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. May God bless these words to our hearts and minds and understanding. Became poor. So 
Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to thee. So here I am to worship. Here I am. praise band. I have titled my thoughts this morning, Home. Home, salt, and light, and to be a home body. Recently, our congregation received one of the best compliments that I have ever heard. In conversation with a young person who's grown up in the church, this young person said that they were grateful for our church because they feel safe that this was a safe place to be. And I don't remember if the word home was used, but that's where my mind went. That our congregation was a home space for this young person to be. And often when describing what home means, the words loving, safe, supportive, appreciated are used. I wonder what other words you would use to describe home. Feel free to put those in our, our chat area. What describes home for you? Home might be a place like our house or our city, our state or our country. Recently, I was visiting with one of our members at Kindred Hearts and she had a map on her wall with the state of Wisconsin that was enlarged to take up almost all of the parameters of the United States with all the other states kind of squished in. Wisconsin was huge and the states were squished around it. Home might be a person or a relationship, a parent, a spouse, a sibling, a good friend, a coach, a teacher, a neighbor. Home might be a job that fits well with the gifts that we naturally possess and those that we can affirm God gave to us. It was the idea of home that spoke to me as I pondered all of our scripture readings for this week, the two that I shared plus the two others. 
The Isaiah reading and its prophetic voice focuses on rebuilding, raising up foundations, repairing breaches, restoring streets, bringing the homeless into our sense of home, and exhorting us to pay attention to one another, including and especially our own kin, our own family. And the prophet speaks about what is an insult to home, when there's quarreling or fighting, when relationship work has not been done or it's been given up because someone is hurt or just for lack of trying, laziness or apathy. There's insult to home when there's oppression of any kind, where what is supposed to be treated with love and honor and respect is not loved and is dishonored and it is not respected and all of this is playing out. An insult to home is when there's hunger, both physical hunger, which makes it impossible for anyone to feel at home because they're struggling to survive, or spiritual hunger where souls are starved for support. The prophet says it's an insult to home when fingers are pointed or people are speaking evil of one another. That immediately removes any hospitality, any safety. And then the psalm for this morning's lectionary readings this speaks of the generations of the upright who are the light for the world, who see the deep dignity of all, especially the poor, and who deal generously with steady hearts, and who are home in God and with God. And our First Corinthians reading, where Paul speaks about the pri what his primary purpose was, and it wasn't to teach about what Jesus taught, but it was to talk about Jesus or preach about Jesus and how Jesus lived, who he was, the human son of God connected with God in spirit and a home person, a homing person to those who followed him. And in his crucifixion, he not only creates a place for us in heaven to be with him after we die, but a person to be with with whom we are always safe and loved and forgiven and welcomed. And in these understandings of safe home spaces, places and people, our Matthew reading encourages us to be salt and light for our world, expanding generously to the world this gift of who Jesus is, this gift we can have of being at home in Jesus. Found in this greatest sermon ever preached, Matthew chapters 5 through 7, we read that we are to be salt and light. And Jesus uses these metaphors to encourage us to be home builders of our home body, this body of Christ. In the message translation, it says, let me tell you why you are here. You are here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Now we know that salt in the winter times in Wisconsin helps create traction to get us going. And salt, salt has always been used to draw out the good flavors that are subtly hidden in food. And it also was used to preserve what would otherwise spoil. So as we do this, as we help people get traction in their lives, as we help bring out the God flavors in their lives and help preserve their lives, we are being salty and children of God. Being salt in the world creates a home place for others. And as salt, we find the good flavors of God, the God flavors of others, and we bring out these best aspects of God's gift in another. We nurture who God has created someone to be and give them enough safety and encouragement over time that they dwell securely in this presence of Jesus with us as the body of Christ. Spiritual writers speak of coming home to our true selves, that our spiritual journey is to come home to what God has created as our true self. 
each one of us created good in God. I have this song I sing with our Saturday school kids. Lily's good. Ackley's good. God created them. They are good. Because I want them to know we're all created good in God. And we have these basic abilities and characteristics that have been gifted to us by our divine creator that create our true self. This, this true self is our relational self. It's our self-giving, unflappable, and unthreatened self that's able to focus on the here and now, this self that can be contemplative with God, this self that is filled as we look on God's creation with awe and wonder, this self that is automatically compassionate, moved with the compassion of Christ, this self that is able to surrender in trust rather than grasp control, this self aware of being a spoke in a larger wheel, and this self that has a passion along with the prophets for peace and justice where every human being knows themselves at home. As salt bearers, we are members of a body who bring out the flavor of our true God-created selves. When Jesus invites the disciples to come and see where he's staying, he's inviting them to come to his home. And it's not just a place, but it's a journey. And it's a mandate. It's a call. He's inviting them and nurturing and encouraging them to be his home body where others will begin to see the light of Christ's presence shining through them. The longer they're with Christ, the more confidence in themselves they gain, the more they shine with Christ because the more like Christ they become. And others will be drawn to this light and to being at home in Christ as well. It was Tom Baudet from NPR's All Things Considered and Motel 6 who paired up for this wonderful catch phrase, we'll leave the light on for you. And one of my sweetest gifts, an enduring gesture given to me by my husband, Hugo, in his continuous attention to me, to our relationship, to our marriage, is his always leaving the light on for me. Whenever I'm out of the house at nighttime, I'll always come home to the lights left on for me so I can find my way. The more, home, more at home we feel in Christ, the more salted we feel by the other home bodies around us, the more we begin to shine this light of home for others to see. And again, the message version says this of verses 14 through 16, Matthew chapter 5. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. And now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God this generous Father in heaven. And our verses from Matthew ends with, end with the admonition that we are not to be like the scribes and the Pharisees. We're to be better. They were not being salt. Their ability to draw out the flavor of God in the people was no longer salty anymore. What they were doing was more self-centered. Their focus more salting the pockets of the powers that were oppressive, and their light was dim as they were not basing their home in faith, but rather in themselves and in the temple. It's not that Jesus was asking us truly to be better, even though I just said that, be better. It's not to be better than a scribe or a Pharisee. That because some of the scribes and Pharisees did live from their true selves and their true sense of calling, but we were to be better than the whitewashed leaders, the ones who looked good on the outside but were corrupt on the inside. That we would do differently, that we won't allow their example to dwell in a home built on sand, that we won't follow that. The prophets of the Old Testament loudly challenge us to recognize 
that a true sense of home means to bring justice and that there can be no home without justice and that justice is all about relationships. Where there is justice, there is true salt and light. I was encouraged when for a moment of break, when I I wanted to eat lunch as I was getting this ready, I turned on Spectrum News. I wasn't expecting to um, hear anything profound, but there's something about Spectrum News that has a more home feel to it than some of the other more contentious news channels. And so as I'm listening, I heard them acknowledge February as Black History Month. And they shared a story about a woman in Milwaukee who was gifted and who felt called to bring a spin class to the neighborhoods that don't have access to this kind of exercise. And when African-American communities are disproportionately affected by lack of, ex- uh, lack of access to basic health care, this was a way to offer exercise and health care in the context of home. As part of the spin class, music from black culture is offered while they work out. And I thought this was a great example of being salt and light, of bringing home and meeting the desire of people in undeserved areas, or underserved, sorry, underserved, very deserved, but underserved areas to exercise. That was a great story. And I thought that maybe that was it, but I was more pleased to realize that it wasn't the only story that had brought a sense of home and honor to Black History Month on that channel. Right away, this was followed by another story about the importance of Rosa Parks in honor of her birthday. And that was followed by a story of a bookstore, which was geared toward the African-American community. And it is the presence of Christ within us that will help us feel at home with experiences that are different from our own cultures of birth. When we are salt and light people, we become home bodies in the home of Christ. We become builders of the body, restorers of the way, repairers of the breaches, raising up a foundation of faith, which becomes a home to generations The prophet continues that when we become safe homes for God's beloved children, that our Lord will guide us continually, satisfying any needs in the parched places of our own lives, and that God will make our bones, our foundational structures of human community and body strong, and we shall be like watered gardens, like springs of water whose waters never fail. So let us gather strength and encouragement from one of our home spaces of the faith as we share in this meal, the meal Jesus shares with us from the home table. This is a meal of resurrection and restoration. This is a meal which nourishes our souls in their parched and broken places, bringing new life. This is a meal where relationships are nourished by the fountain of forgiveness. Let us sense our own welcome of Jesus' home and hospitality as we share in this bread and cup together. May the gifts that we offer, loving God, be used to fix breakfast for hungry children, to shower others with grace and to patch the potholes of poverty that have been created in the roadways of the kingdom. May God bless us as we share from this home meal. Amen. I don't often do this. Uh, In fact, I don't remember doing it on the online ministry, and we used to do it prior to COVID. We used to share a statement of faith, an affirmation of faith, and I'd like to share one that was written before we share this meal together. It was written by Robert Tom, and um, I'm sorry, by Gordon Tom. And uh, it's a great prayer of thanksgiving to share before our meal. And it says, may the God of the table be with you. This is the fast that God chooses for us as we come to feast, that we empty our hearts in service so they may be filled again, that This is the way that God offers to us that we will sing praises as we journey to the realms of hope and love. 
When you came proclaiming creation, God of wonder, you brought forth what no eye had seen, snowflakes drifting in a meadow, hawks floating lazily in the sky. You whispered what no ear had heard, whale songs in the deep, a coyote caroling the moon. You established what no heart believed, justice for the most vulnerable, healing for the broken. Day by day you called us to your side, but when evening fell we slipped into sin's enticing shadows, dashing, dashing your dreams for us. You sent prophets to us, relying on the Spirit to give them the right words, but we did not notice as we blurted hubris. So you asked Jesus to come, dashing the hopes of the wicked. So with those who do not fear the good news which he brought, we lift our voices in glad shouts of joy. Holy, holy, holy are you, God, who shows the way. Creation joins you in praise. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who knows your mind. Hosanna in the highest. He came proclaiming your salvation, God of holiness, your child of salt and light. For those in the shadow of mourning, he brought light. For those whose lives crumbled around them, he rebuilds their hopes. For those who are separated by the chasms of fear, he stretches a bridge so they can meet each other in harmony. For all who face death's uncertainty, he went into that unknown, coming forth to reassure us that its power had been broken. And we see to we seek to seem as we seek to seem him in our midst, as we try to hear your word of life. We trust in the faith which is mysterious. Christ died, showing us the way to death. Christ was raised, showing us the way to new life. Christ will come to show us the way to your heart. Here at the table of grace, Holy Spirit, proclaim life. Transform these simple gifts and the people gathered in this place. As we taste hope in the broken bread, we would go to break the bonds of injustice and free the oppressed. As we are filled with the cup, we would be light to the world, opening our pantry to the hungry, wrapping a naked child in our love. And when God's time is fulfilled, we are gathered together with our siblings in the kingdom of heaven. We will not keep anything bottled up, but will shout our praise to you, God in community, holy in one. Amen. We remember on the night that Jesus took bread with his disciples, he asked a blessing. Would you pray with me? Lord, we ask a blessing upon this bread and through the lens of our technologies that we might in its breaking know your presence and know how you were broken surrendered to us in our human state and how you showed us the path through death, home to eternal life. We remember you and ask you to bless this bread for our physical nourishment and spiritual nourishment. In your name, in Jesus' name, amen. After blessing the bread, Jesus broke the bread and shared it with his disciples. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat when you do this. Remember me. Let us eat the bread together. At the end of the meal, Jesus took the cup and asked a blessing before sharing it. Let us pray together. Lord, wherever forgiveness is needed, we are so grateful for the never-ending outpouring of the fountain of forgiveness. Thank you for bringing forgiveness to our lives, and thank you for strengthening us as fountains of forgiveness for your world. Bless this cup as we receive it from you. In your name, amen. 
And after blessing the cup, Jesus shared the cup with his disciples, saying, This cup is the cup of a new covenant. My blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of this, all of you, and as often as you do this, remember me. Let us drink together. Amen. As we conclude worship, I have these announcements that I'd like to share with you this morning. First of all, I'd like to share this announcement about Jerry Luth, who's turning 90 on the 18th of February. I was able to visit with Jerry Luth this past week, and he's gotten one birthday card from our church congregation. So um, let us all see if we can get him a birthday card so that he feels uh, the love from his home congregation for his 90th birthday. As a church, we're also collecting these items for the Christine Ann Shelter for Victims of Domestic Violence. We're collecting soup. We're collecting infant Tylenol and infant ibuprofen. We're collecting jars of peanut butter. We're collecting Walmart gift cards or $10 quick trip gift cards. We continue with our Zoom book study, and this week, uh, Brian Smith will be sending out a link to the study. So if you're interested in joining us this week and haven't been a part of it, please uh, give the church office a call or connect with Phyllis Petrie here at ppetrie2 at wi.rr.com, and she'll get that link to you. These are the contemplative opportunities that we have at the church every week, centering prayer from Tuesday, Tuesdays from 1215 to 1235, Divine Hour Liturgy on Sunday mornings from 815 to 845. We have a women's Bible study that meets on Tuesdays from 1230 to 230, and you are welcome to come to that uh, women's Bible study if you want any information on that please feel free to give the church office a call. Also, I want to thank you for um, your tithes and offerings. Let's see here. Let me get that slide up here. I guess I'm going to do it that way. I'll be in the picture on this one. But thank you for the tithes and offerings that you send into our church. We are very grateful. Here we go. We're very grateful for... Um, all that supports our ministry and our work, this online ministry would not be able to happen um, without the support of your tithes and offerings. So thank you so much for that. Neither would our mission outreach or any of the work that we do as a church. So these are the different ways you can help support the church with personal check, with bill pay through your bank, with electronic funds transfer, with PayPal. Um, these are the ways that you can do that kind of support. Sorry, I'm a little clunky here at the end. I had too many slides to try to deal with. But as we conclude worship, I have this benediction that I'd like to share with us, again, based on our scriptures this morning. To the huddled in the shadows of fear and worry, God sends us to be light. To those whose lives and hope have lost all flavor, God sends us to be salt. To a society where love is tossed aside as easily as a food wrapper, Spirit sends us to be faithful carers of everyone we meet. May God bless us. Amen.